Underneath the stone heart of London beats a very real struggle between two warring tribes of equal strength and of equal number. Although the cause for this conflict is, at present, subject to speculation, the Yellow Tribe and the Purple Tribe have been at each other's throats for the best part of two decades. Despite the longevity and ferocity of this battle, it's clear that only one victor shall emerge from the underground. One such specimen is this fellow. Although the cylindrical protrusions on its back may look daunting, the truth behind Explodor Nardinantum's history is a fascinating story. Here, we see a young Explodor in its prime. It stays within close range of its advancing group, hoping only to endeavour in their journey to reclaim this lost territory. The creature's eyesight unfortunately has not developed as well as its comrades, and in a slightly blinded state can only assist its tribe by aiming its egg cannon in the general vicinity of an enemy. The enemy approaches, fearfully aware of our Explodor's angry eggs. In this instance, our creature prevails and the battle shifts. What a brave little exploder. Oh, what's this? Our little beast has split off from the main group. Where could it be going? Aha! It seems as though our stimulated young specimen was in search of a mate. Two hits with a cricket bat seals the deal and our young romancers will mate for life. They quickly rendezvous with their tribe, being forced to keep up the pretense of German grenade-wielding, egg-spewing psychopaths, when in fact our young and viral Explodor probably feels like a modern-day star-crossed Romeo. I know I did when I met my fair lady. Unbidden by new relationships forged, our dynamic duo set off with fresh vigour to purge what could soon be an underground labyrinth full of fertilised granata. Lovely. Hand in hand, they frolic down the elevators to the welcome sounds of the enemy's blood-curdling cries. As can be seen in this yellow tribe specimen, the pods on the back of a young explorer are firm and erect. Although extreme surveillance of these mysterious creatures has been undertaken since their discovery by Luntian author Digvid Mimi, the third of his name, we can only judge their use to be involved with cross fertilization. A unique attribute of the Explodor Nardinantum's reproductive system. The leading scientists of our day believe that explodors reproduce asexually, that is, not involving any physical contact. The reasoning behind this can be found by looking into the past over this planet's recent history. The Great War changed many things on this blue dot hanging in space, so very distant from our own home. 
Most notably was the sudden growth and subsequent domination of the seas by the most intelligent and noble of all sea creatures. Yes, that's right. What we can only translate to what was once called sea mares. While this was taking place, the vast majority of all remaining so-called Homo sapiens soon discovered that they had poisoned the air of their atmosphere and migrated at once to their ancestral home, the sea. These two puzzle pieces put together form a shocking conclusion. As can be seen on the screen now, we can deduce that Explodor adenantum is, in fact, an offspring formed from the womb of a Homo sapien after fertilization from a sea mare. The two dominant species conducting horrific experiments under the waves to attempt habitation of the land lost to radiation poisoning. And now, our young creatures have adopted the sea mare's way of giving birth. Hampered by their poor eyesight, they are doomed to toss eggs at any moving target. Mate, you're about as useful as a can break on a canoe. Give me the damn thing. I apologise for that. It seems our signals that <coughs> were, were interfered with a passing foreign ship. Where, where was I? Harry, this great man will love my mother's grave, I swear. I <coughs> and now, our young creatures have adopted the sea mare's way of giving birth. Hampered by their poor eyesight, they are doomed to toss eggs at any moving target hoping only to strike Lucky and fertilise a willing mate. But this way of life does come at a cost. Just like many other creatures to have survived within these harsh conditions, Explodor Nardinantum has developed a way to ensure that only the very strongest of its kind survives, to pass on its evolutionary data to the next generation. The vast build-up of eggs within the projections on Explodor's back threatens a cataclysmic explosion if the creature runs out of space to store said eggs. Although this may sound prehistorically brutal, it means that only the prime beasts have a chance of producing offspring, and so the life cycle of Explodor Nardinantum is complete. Vicious, brutal, and completely OP. And so closes today's episode within this dreary dungeon, inhabited by the most fantastic of animals still surviving among this great city's ruins. Until next time, when we will explore a slightly more open air habitat. Oh, well, this is awkward. It seems as though we have broken the fourth wall. Well, in any case, you go ahead and click that subscribe button if you want to see more, and don't forget to like and comment on what you'd like to see next. Toodlebib! <laughs>